Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Looking forward to chatting with my boy. New addition to Dusty Vision TV. Came across his Instagram channel not too long ago and had him on the show before and it was just a great vibe and I'm looking forward to having him consistently every Thursday right here on Dusty Vision TV. He's a self-proclaimed mob junkie. Ladies and gentlemen from Underworld Legends, Joe. What up, man? What's going on, Dusty? How you doing, bro? Doing great, man. Doing great. Really looking forward to chatting with you this week and talking about some uh, some more mob figures, some Underworld Legends. Let's talk a little bit more about Bumpy Johnson. We did, you know, talk about him, you know, a couple of shows ago, but he's such a fascinating historical figure in the mob world. Talk to me a little bit about how he climbed up the ranks to be one of the biggest drug dealers in Harlem history. And, uh, I mean, it, it was almost unheard of for a black dude to be making deals with the Italian mafia back then, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, well, he – it wasn't just drugs. Yes, that's what he was sent away for ultimately to Alcatraz in 52, I believe. He – um he were nothing went through Harlem, you know, criminally without Bumpy knowing. He he ran everything. Um, but yeah, he was born in on Halloween, nineteen oh five, in Charleston, South Carolina, in a little little shack, and to a poor family, of course, different times, you know, uh, in this American South. Uh, he had a few brothers and sisters. I know he had multiple sisters and he, you know, he always kind of had his family a little worried because he had a very, you know, strong temper. And he also was a ladies man. It didn't matter if the, you, you were white or black, you know, the girls loved him. So that kind of always put a little bit of fear into his parents because, you know, that kind of, that time in history very racist time anything could happen you know and it, it actually ended up catching up to his family he came to New York in the 19 teens uh, after his brother did because his brother was actually fleeing a lynch mob because he allegedly killed a white man so you know and, and he witnessed many brutal lynchings growing up too not witness but you know they were they were common in his area at the time so they his parents wanted to get his their whole family out of there which they did most of the brothers and sisters ended up coming up to new york city and bumpy comes to harlem moves in with a sister i believe and he started off like kind of like capone regular kid made friends on the streets Little by little, you know, I think he was a paper boy, did little jobs, odd jobs like that in his early teens. And then it eventually turned into gambling on the streets with his friends, craps games. Then it turned into uh, holding up these craps games. And by the time he was 16, 17, he dropped out of school and he really had his own crew of young thugs. And he really started off in the protection racket for storefronts. Um, he was, you know, not really extorting, I don't think, because he, he was just very well respected and he did it in a gentlemanly manner. I and mean, he probably had to do a little bit of extorting to get some of his money. But he was pretty well respected by the time he was 16, 17, doing this on the streets. And, you know, one day, actually, he comes face to face with Harlem's top gangster at the time by the name of William Bub Hewlett. Um, he came to collect some protection money at one of his stores and the, the story goes that the store owner said, what do you mean? I just paid my money to that guy and he points on the corner and it's Bumpy and his crew and, and Bub looks at him and he sees he's a kid and he's like, well, he laughs and Bumpy, no fear at all, goes right up to him and tells him, hey, look, this is my territory. We could either, you know, you can either let me have it or we're going to fight over it more or less is what he told him. And he earned Bub's respect right there. And that's really when Bumpy's story, I think his underworld legend, his street reputation is born. He He's well known um, as a 
you know, a top a young hoodlum coming up like the movie Hoodlum. And he's recognized by the Harlem policy bankers now, which was the big uh, criminal money maker at the time, which is basically just the illegal lottery system. And he was, he and a few of his guys turned into bodyguard for hire. Um, and he served as bodyguard for many guys, most significantly Alex Pompez, who was a top top um, policy banker in Harlem as well as a couple other guys Casper Holstein but there was one great story that was told by his wife in the book she wrote about him Harlem Godfather which is one of my favorites and she tells the story that one night I believe Bumpy was about 17 years old him and his uh, best friend one of his best friends and you could say lieutenant a guy by the name of Jacob Matt Pettigrew, who later became one of his top or his top narcotic lieutenant later in the fifties, um, saved the life of Alex Pompez. Bumpy um, was escorting him in a dark alley in Harlem when a when a stick up man jumped out in front of Pompez and basically said, "Run your pockets!" And Bumpy fended him off with nothing but a switchblade. Um, eventually the cops come and he fights the cop too. He, he punched the cop in the face and, you know, told Pompez and his boy Jacob to get the hell out of here. And, uh, I think he ended up in the bookings that night. Um, but it's, it's, that's a great story. And now even more so he's, you know, really making a street name for himself. And then he becomes under the wing of, which is portrayed in the movie Hoodlum, of the famous Madame St. Clair, who was now emerging as the top policy banker. And then you have the whole war with Dutch Schultz when she was his, uh, excuse me, Bumpy was her street enforcer, protecting all of her rackets and getting in shootouts, whatever it may be, with Dutch Schultz's mob. And that's a really fascinating story. Um, and eventually, little by little, um, Madame St. Clair drops out of the race. Dutch Schultz dies. And now Harlem is Bumpy's. Um, he ends up in prison a little bit here and there. But even when he's gone, it's still his. He, he ends up, I, I know he spent some time in, in Leavenworth. And he, he still ran Harlem from there. And he would be the undisputed boss in the jail. Um Fast forward to 19, early 1950s, he sent away to Alcatraz on a narcotics bid. Um, him, he and a f few of his operators were, uh, you know, like I said before, Jacob Knack Pettigrew was cohorting with a couple of, actually many people don't know this, but a couple of Italians, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Tony Scunge was his nickname can't remember his full name right now, but he was a Gambino soldier, Gambino crime family soldier at the time of still Anastasia crime family. And they were really put, they were the top dealers. They were pushing heroin, um, in like the Broadway area in Harlem. So yeah, Bumpy ends up in Alcatraz and now he's, he's the boss of Alcatraz as far as the, the black inmates go. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, they, and I'll, um, uh, they say he was the m most, powerful man uh, at Alcatraz that would be able to get the Anglin brothers their boat 